Hey, good morning everyone, it's Gary. And today I'm gonna to go through a case study type video where I'm gonna show you what I do with a CRM because this is one of the biggest, I guess, dilemmas with a CRM. Everybody thinks they want one. Everyone knows they need one. Most people don't know what to do with them. And the reason most people get a CRM and then fail at doing anything productive with it is they just don't use it the right way. Oftentimes it's a, it's a massive data input project and everyone hates it. You know, all the people in the field are saying, look, I, I can't support this stupid CRM. I got to go out and sell something. You know, I've got to focus on my customers. I can't sit in the office dumping data into a CRM so someone up in management can get a nice dashboard report. And that's all true. And especially when you're a small business, you really don't need to put data in to tell you what you already know. So the way this CRM has been designed and the way it works for small business is to actually do the things for you instead of you having to do them. I mean, that's the whole purpose of a good quality CRM project or implementation is that it actually reduces your workload, doesn't increase your workload. And today I want to give you a great example of how I use the CRM to take a very massive number of tasks and reduce it down to a very small number. And without a CRM, it would almost be impractical or almost in, you know, impossible, especially for a small business to survive. And I'll explain a little bit more about why this makes such a big difference and how this saves me so much money and makes me so much more effective at marketing because I have the ability to use some simple tools, some quick click tools to take my tasks from a very massive number, which would be insurmountable down to a manageable number and really identify who my leads are. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing here other than to chop out some things that you know, are pretty boring and um, you don't need to watch me, for example, write an email. I mean, I'll start it and I'll end it and I'll chop that part out. But for the most part, you'll see everything I do as I make my mistakes, as I drink my coffee and just get this thing done uh, and explain it. So if you hear some ums and ahs, well, that's just the way it is. So here we go. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my CRM and this works whether you're using our CloudNet 360 CRM, it works whether you're using our Soccer Pro Billing Center, it's really the same thing. Come into the CRM. And here, um, we have very specific um, proprietary information being listed here. I'm going to have to take some of this and um, unfortunately I need to cover this screen up because it has customer information down here. You can't really see it anymore because I'm going to cover it. But what I can see is all our recent activity. I can see our sales. I can see our tasks. I can see our subscriber list. I can see all this information just as a dashboard. Now, this is you know fun to see as uh, a multi-person team. It's great to be able to see what other people are doing. If I wanna see you know more, I can just click it. Although again, I can't tell what you can see here, but we have our recent activity and the list can grow for a longer time duration. Again, if you're by yourself, probably doesn't matter because you're the only one adding the comments in. If you're like me, you will love having these comments here because A, I get to see what other people are talking about with our other customers, and B, uh, well, you know, I barely remember uh, the kids I took on vacation with my kids from last summer, and they always make fun of me for it. So if I weren't putting my activity and comments into the CRM as a little reminder, when I go back to this customer record, I like to be able to see my running discourse, like, oh yeah, we had a call here, and then we talked about this, and I mentioned that, and you know, that sort of thing. Um, you can use it to try to make that whole, oh, what's Jimmy's son's name? Well, to me, I don't care about that, really. Uh, I always think that's a little cheesy to try to put in little vignettes into a CRM record so that you can come back later and say, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, uh, how's Jimmy's baseball game? Well, whatever. If that's your style, you can do it. It's not my style. I like to just stick to, hey, how can I service the customer? What do they need? What did I promise them? And, you know, where are we now? So let's keep moving here. When 
you have a massive number of data points. You know, for example, with Soccer Pro, we have a freemium model, okay? So we have massive numbers of users, massive. And we get more and more every single day, okay? Every single day people are signing up and that's the whole benefit of a freemium model. Now, the downside to a freemium model is that only 2%, 3%, 5%, 1%, you know, depending on what your model is, are ever going to pay you for that product. And that's okay. I mean, that's the whole purpose of a freemium model. You get this massive grassroots user base and people recognize the value of your system. And then the people that need to use the added features, well, they're the ones that pay the tab for everyone else. So we've got 95% free riders and 5% bill payers. So from a business perspective though, what do I do when I have 95% of my people or my users that are truly never going to give us a nickel, okay? By design, right? It's all by design. Well, you have to find out who is going to give you that nickel and that's where you have to have a CRM. And not just any CRM. Um, you could go out, you can get an email marketing system, you can get like a constant contact or a MailChimp or some of these other things and I know they're starting to get uh, more tools in there for identification so there's probably more you can do in there uh, they definitely won't have the level of what we're doing with a, a full-blown CRM small business CRM and I'm just going to show you one part of it so this is just going to be let's say the preliminary part of what you would do with a CRM and there's a lot more to it that we'll do afterwards so I'll follow up with some additional videos and teach you more about what I'm doing and show you actual case studies of how I've taken this as the preliminary step which is likely the final step in these other systems but for us it, <clears throat> excuse me it's the for us it's the preliminary step and we will just start our identification at this point now I just need to explain that we have this whole freemium system in Soccer Pro, but we have a billing CRM website builder system. Well, who's going to use that? Not the players. Uh, solo coaches don't care. Uh, private coaches don't care. The only people that care about a billing system are going to be clubs that care about billing their customers. Colleges don't care. They don't, they don't charge their players to play, but they will use a CRM for uh, marketing for recruiting I should say so <clears throat> I need to identify who cares about billing I need to identify who cares about uh, recruiting and then I need to segment those people and we need to send things to them in addition to emails obviously I'm using email today you know I believe in it I believe in texting I believe in emails I believe in snail mail I believe in online advertising and social media I believe in all those things. I think everything is a, a tool in the toolbox. And if you just choose one tool, you're going to be making a mistake. We obviously are selling and marketing our tools, um, but there's other tools out there that you should be using too. I mean, we don't really handle the direct mail. Uh, we have a, a mailing system, okay? So we have a system inside the CRM that will personalize and create the form letters so you can take a form letter write it print it off of our system and have it all all the contact information personalization information gets injected in but you're still going to have to take it down to the post office I mean we're not going to mail it for you there's other things that uh, we do like with texting etc but let's keep going here because I, I want to get to the heart of the matter I want to show you how we start off taking this massive massive list which we couldn't really afford to market to and shrink it down. And here's, uh, again, let me just get a little more specific. If I want to send these people a direct mailer, okay, and I have a million people on the list, well, direct mailing is going to cost me on the low side maybe 50 cents, probably closer to a dollar, okay, by the time it's all said and done. So if I have a million people on my list and I want to send out one direct mail piece, it's going to cost me a million dollars. The problem is there's only a small number of people that actually want it. So if you take 5% of a million, probably smaller uh, in the case of soccer, you're going to spend a massive amount of money for a small return. You can't afford to do that. It's just, it's unreasonable. 
What I need to do is I need to find out and identify who is actually interested in billing because people like players, coaches, not interested in billing aren't going to be interested in the emails that I send about our billing system. So this is where I start. I want to take that massive list and I want to shrink it down into something very, very small. I mean, obviously, if I send out a million mailers, um, that's an insurmountable cost for for almost any business. You know, I don't care whether you're a big business or not. You cannot throw money away uh, at a negative return. You really can't do it for long. Especially a small business, you need to be able to send out uh, very, very specific, very targeted mailers. So, for example. My objective is to send up, send out about a thousand. Okay, now we're talking orders of magnitude because I'm shrinking my target down from a million down to a thousand. Okay, a thousand dollars in mailers. Well, sure, you can send that out. That's a thousand dollars. Okay, and the return on that's going to be high because these are going to be very specific people that do care about the topic that I'm sending the mailer out. So what I want to do is I, I need to identify who those people are. Okay. And the first thing I've done is I've created some video content, put it on YouTube, and we talk about our product. We've done tutorials, just like the tutorial I'm doing now, except we've done them specifically for this Soccer Pro product. Now what I'm going to do is tell people, hey, that, that video exists. Because you can put all the content up. If nobody knows it exists, well, obviously, they're not going to go watch your video. And that's always the trick, isn't it? You can be a content creator, but people still need to consume it. Otherwise, your content is worthless. So you can grind or you can be smart. So we need to be smart about what we're doing. Grind less, smart more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my content library, except there's a couple steps I can do. I can do this in two directions. I can either start my content and create my action link and my um, my tags, or I can do it the other way. I can start with my action link and create it. So I'm gonna come in here and create an action link. I've created a new category. These categories are just for organization. I can create as many as I want, and I just click it. And uh, in this case, I already created the billing system. So I wanna know, I wanna create a category. I just wanna organize my my uh, action links for my billing system. And I can create as many of these categories as I want, just like a folder on your computer. Now I'm gonna add my link. Okay, I'm gonna name it. Again, this is just for organization purposes. And I know what this one is, so it's about my order page. And my anchor text. In anchor text, you need to give people a call to action, basically. It doesn't have to be very magical. Either they're going to like what you have to say and click on your link or not. So, click here. All right, now I just need to take my video link, copy that and paste it in. Now you do have to be careful when you are pasting these things that you uh, make sure you only put in the information needed. And you have to be careful that you don't get a space at the end. You see where my, it might be hard to see, but sometimes when you copy a link, there'll be a space at the end that could mess up your link. So always test it out. Okay, category billing system. I could put a lead score on this. This is another more sophisticated way of tracking people because some people, some leads are worth more than other leads. As people click on more things, you know, like for example, if somebody clicks on one email from my billing system, maybe they discover that, hey, um, that's not for me. Okay, so that's the last time they click on it. Well, that person has a lot less value than somebody that will come in and say, look, uh, I've clicked on six of your emails all about the billing system. Suddenly that person is propelled to the top of the list. Uh, their lead score is much higher. So I want to have that capability to track that. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. I just want you to know that that's there. Um, but there's some automated tools that I'll use that, you know, in this case, I'm not going to actually use the lead score. It all depends on the circumstance. Okay, so I'm going to save that and continue. 
and now I can add this person directly to a sales path. Well, because I'm just doing this for the first time, I'm not going to put them into a sales path yet. I can always put them into a sales path at any time that I choose, and I can do that in mass. It's click, click, boom, they all get added to a sales path. That's another tool we have, and I can show you that later. But for right now, I'm not going to put people into a sales path. I could also remove people from a sales path. This is just another way of segmenting who you are selling and marketing to. If you put something out there that is an, um, let's call it a takeaway or a trigger that pulls people out of a sales path because it disqualifies them as a lead. Um, for example, if they're a player, or you, you might want to put out a survey or an email and say, hey, if you're a coach, click here. If you're a player, click here. Or send out a survey and talk about things that are player related versus coaching related. If you find out that person is a player, well, pull them out of a uh, billing sales path because you don't want to waste your time calling them. You don't want to waste your time um, sending direct mail pieces to them because they're a player. They're not a, a club. The clubs are the one that are going to pay the bill. The players are just using the system. So you want to get rid of those people. And it's the same way with tags. I'm going to come in here and well, you know, now I don't have the tag I need. Okay. So I could go back and I could create a tag down here. I can manage tags, create one, or I can just click here and do it on the fly. So I'm just going to call this one um, billing and keep it simple. Okay. Oops. All right. So let's just expand this. I have my tag right here. I'll click it and next button and I'm not going to remove anyone again the whole purpose of a removal is to say look I identified this person as a prospect but now through some technique and some information I've sent out I've discovered they're not actually a prospect so get rid of them or we can move them well there's a lot of things you can do but that's basically the gist of it I have a prospect I identified, I discovered he's not a prospect, let's move them out of that category and focus on the people that are more important to me, which are the people that are eventually going to be paying customers. Okay, we're just gonna save that. And now I have my action link built, okay? I have a tag created. So let's go into our content library and I'll create a new category. We'll call this one billing. And again, the whole purpose of all these categories is purely organization. It's not functional, it's organization. Just like putting folders on your desktop or in your documents or wherever you put them. Just organizational folders, okay? Now, I'm going to name my contact, oh, I'm going to name my content, not contact. And here's something that's interesting. Our split test system will really help you identify what your list is doing. And I talk about this all the time and, and I don't think it actually gets through to a lot of people because they just think that, you know, I read this book, okay? I got this book and the, it was like this guy and he told me that we've done all these case studies and, you know, they've proven that these are the best subject lines and all this other garbage. Well, that's all BS, okay? Because I've done a whole bunch of different businesses and every single one of them has different things that people key in on. I don't know why, it's just what it is, okay? So if you go off and you get a book, it's not bad to have a, let's call it a best practices starting point, you know, or a foundation. But I can tell you with 100% certainty that if you follow that book and you follow their rules, you are destined to fail or at least not do as good as you could be doing if you were split testing all your own stuff. And I know that in some cases, like for business opportunity, um, there's more response from one type of subject line and one type of what's called content. 
And then with, uh, let's say, a business system, there's a different reaction to different things. For example, with CloudNet 360, we get a strong reaction from people when we talk about new video and uh, new features. That's our number one thing, new video, new features. So especially when you put those two together, if you put down new video and about a new feature, boom, there goes your open rate, okay? It goes way up. But soccer is different. People really like to see what I, um, the word soccer, okay? <laughs> Just works. So what I need to do is I always need to shift my thinking. I'm, by habit, I'm always like new video and then I put the feature down. Okay, in this case, I want to. I have to put soccer in there. So we. Uh, I'm gonna keep going here. Okay, I still think people like video though, so I put it in there. Soccer specific order page, new video. Now, does it matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase? I don't know. How would I know that? I mean, it's impossible to know unless I do this. I'm just gonna move on because I want to get this done but I want you to see that it's so easy to create split tests uh, one two three four I could create another one let's just try that let's see what happens if we put in hype and no hype okay so we tried a little hypey we tried a little less hypey and um, I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. Okay, now all I do is I put in my email. And here, uh, you don't need to see me type. So I'm just going to pause the video for a minute. I'm going to type up a quick little blurb, tell people that the video exists, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've written up a short little email. Again, it doesn't need to be long. I'm just trying to get people to the video. So I want to tell them what they're going to see in the video, why they should go watch it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my action link. And all I have to do is I come down here to action links, I click it. I'm going to click on my category. In this case, I created a new one called billing system. And I just click it, boom, puts it in. Okay, now this is going to be my actual link. And this is just so I know where it is, okay? So this tells me later, you know, this seems like, well, what is that in there for? Why'd you put that in there? This won't actually be in the email that gets sent. What happens though is, remember, we have a content library, right? And this email, this is kind of one of those emails that's going out at a point in time. But most of the time, you're going to reuse your content. You know, you're not going to have to rewrite your content every single time. And when you have a multi-person organization, other people are going to be able to come in and use your content and use a different profile. So instead of my name or someone else's name, they're going to be able to use their own name. It'll do different merge codes. It'll do different personalization. And you get to multiply the strength of every piece of content that you create. You can use it for broadcasts. You can use it for 
autoresponders. You can use it for every single person and personalize it for every single person. So the content library is very powerful. It saves you a massive amount of time over time. Not everyone's going to be applicable. Again, this one, well, probably not because once people, well, maybe it will. Now that I think about it, it actually will probably use this one in an autoresponder because as we are adding people over time, we'll have to come back to this uh, point. So yeah, I'll probably use this one again. But you know, whether I do or whether I don't, it makes no difference. It'll be in the content library. I can always make that choice. I can come back, I can alter it. So I can keep most of it and then just uh, modify a couple sentences and then save it as a new one in the content library. So the content library is very useful. Now again, let's go back to why do we have this here? Well, I forget things, you know. Six months from now, are you going to remember what this action link is or where it's organized? Now you can come in here and you say, oh yeah, here's my organization note. So now it's leading you back. So all you have to do is look at the content and then you can come back to this um, action link without having to go search for it. Just one of those little details, you know, the devil's in the details. Actually, I put that in this email. But it's always true, you know, we've been doing this for a very long amount of time, over a decade plus, I think 2006. So what, 14 years, decade and a half. And over those years, you evolve a product into being excellent. You know, you don't create a product that's excellent on day one, you evolve it into excellence. Okay, now another thing I like to do, I'm not gonna do it here, but often I will change my anchor text for a different link. If you want to be very creative, and really start to figure out where people click in your emails. You can do a different action link here and a different action link here. So what could you do very simply? Well, if I'm going to have this go to the same destination, which I would, uh, I would just rename it. I would create a tag. You know, I might call it billing top, billing bottom, now or billing PS, whatever I wanna do. And now I could see where people are clicking. Are more people clicking on this link? or more people clicking on this link? Are more people reacting to this anchor text or more people reacting to this anchor text? Typically, if I want to know whether it's uh, location or text, I would first do it with the same anchor text and just put it in two locations. That'll tell me if one location is superior to the other. And then after that, I can just simply change it and say, okay, now that I know that this location is superior, uh, what happens when I start changing my anchor text, you know, to something, try this, try that, and see what people react to. Is click here a good thing to put in? Well, you know, you can try that, right? Order page video, click here. Or you could put down here, order page video, learn more. You know, maybe learn more is more reactive. It gets a, a stronger reaction than click here. You know, maybe that curiosity gets them going versus a command to click here. I don't know. Uh, these are things you need to test. Over time, you figure it out. You know, you, you won't you won't do this one time and then go, okay, that worked. Uh, I'll do that forever. Well, doing the same thing forever never works. So again, back to these guru books. If you buy a guru book, uh, you're guaranteed to fail because you're going to follow that one formula. It's going to be the same over and over. Time's going to change. Your market is different than their market. All these different factors change. You have to have a system that makes it easy for you to discover on your own what works for your business and for your audience and over time. So let's keep going. Um, I could save this content and do something with it later. I can send a test email. I can preview it. I can do all these different things. In this case, I'm just going to save and send broadcast. Okay, now it's going to load up my content. It's going to show me my different split tests, my subject lines. I can put an attachment in here. I can make this a conditional email. You know, what happens if they open it? What happens if they don't open it? What if they open it or not open? So I can do different things, different automation. So for example, if someone were to open this, I might want to send them a follow-up email right away or maybe a text message or maybe you know have a phone call triggered. There's a lot of things I can do uh, through these conditional emails. Again, do you have to do that? No, you know, and sometimes you just need to get things done, right? You need to get that communication out. You can try to create these monster labyrinths of sales automation, but at the same time, you know, 
it takes time. It takes you know a little thought, like okay, what do I want to happen? I want this to trigger, then that to trigger, and that to trigger. One of the biggest problems I see with people using sales automation is they try to do everything before they do anything. But you don't need to. Like I said, this is emails going into the content library. I can come back to this at any time. I can send this again. I can send a similar email. I can put this automation in later. I can take this uh, group that gets segmented and I can take them in mass and dump them into a sales path that has my automation in it. So do I want to wait on this? No. Uh, we're at a point in time in our release of this product. I want to get people into that product. I want them to know about it. I can always come back later, do that uh, transfer of my identified segment into a sales path and create that automation later. So just because I don't do certain things up front doesn't mean I can't come back to it. Now, after I do something repeatedly, okay, this is where I talk about the system will do work for you. When I start to do something over and over, that's the first thing I look at and say, I don't want to do that anymore. It, you know, if I'm doing something five times a week, I don't want to do it five times a week. I want to do it zero times a week, preferably, or at least you know one time or two times, but not five times. I want to reduce that workload so I can be more effective at uh, taking care of my customers and finding new customers. So this one's going to come from Tom and all the information gets injected. Everything is in here. This lead first name, this is our personalization. I can do more personalization. I can do address. I can do all kinds of things. I can do multiple personalization. Anywhere I want to put these merge codes. But again, you know, you can go crazy doing these things or you can keep it simple. In this case, it's a very short, very simple email. I'm just trying to get people into the video. That's my only mission is to get people to watch my YouTube video. Next step, I can segment. Well, I'm not going to segment now because um, this is my segmentation creation. Later, I will probably segment, okay? It doesn't do any good to keep sending garbage emails to your entire list. If you have received, let's say, four emails from me about billing and you haven't clicked on any of them, well, it's time to move you out of the recipient list. And then I would send to a targeted audience. I would send only billing emails to my billing list. Okay, and I would tell them more about billing, how to implement it, how to get an appointment, a demo, you know, all those different things that you would do with people that have shown interest in what you're trying to sell. So I'm going to schedule the broadcast. Here we have a spam o meter. Nothing is a hundred percent. If it were, uh, every spammer could just put their email in here and go, ah, oh, look at that spam analysis point one. This one's going to get through to everyone. Well, they're not. I mean, there's a lot of factors. It's your domain. It's the way you put your signature. It's uh, there's so many different things that it'll, it'll drive you crazy. So getting your content through into the inbox, there's a lot of uh, garbage info out there. You know, we've got competitors that talk about 90%, 99% delivery. Well, those guys are all lying to you, 100% lying. What they're saying is they're sending 99%, which is to me, why, why are you bragging about sending you know, 98%, we send them all. <laughs> the only ones we don't send are the ones that we look at and go, oh, this is a garbage email, we, we don't do it. Well, that's not bragging, that's just like, hey, I did my job, I ordered a meal, I got a meal. Wow, good for you. But anyhow, uh, the spam analysis is here to help you as a guide. If you put something in there that is just obviously spammy, well, we can't guarantee that your emails will get to the inbox, nobody can, but we can demonstrate to you what will definitely not get to the inbox, okay? So what we're doing is just providing this third-party guide. This is a third-party analysis tool. It's not our analysis tool. Uh, we like using the third-party because they're, you know, the spam assassin guys are specialists at this. So we integrate that into our system so that you can see what your spam analysis is and increase your odds of getting into the inbox. Again, no one can guarantee it. If they do, they're lying to you and a lot will. Uh, but you need to increase the odds that your stuff is going to get where you want it to get. Okay, next, I can schedule it. I can either send it now or I can schedule it to a specific time. There's different reasons why you'd want to do that. There's different times of the day that work better for different markets. Today is Thursday. I know that uh, for business markets, 
We do better from Monday afternoon to Friday before noon, okay? If I were writing this on, let's say, Friday at 4 o'clock, well, I don't want to send it now. No one's going to read it, so it's going to be a wasted email. So then I would schedule it for probably Saturday morning or save it for the next week and do it, you know, Monday at noon or Tuesday at 9, you know, something like that. Well, it happens to be Thursday. It is 8.38 a.m., so this is a good time to send it, and I'm just going to add it to the queue. There's a lot of checks in here. Uh, what we found is that people will click add to the queue before they're ready to send. This used to send the email. We would send it and boom, it was gone. Um, and then people would send out until before they were ready. So again, our system has evolved up over the decades, decade and a half of evolution to include some of these things that may not seem, you know, they're not obvious, but they're important. So add the queue makes you click again. Boom. Well, that wasn't enough either. <laughs> You know, because then people say, oh, no, I, I, I made a mistake. I thought it was going to go into schedule, but it went immediate. And I didn't want it to go immediate and blah, blah, blah. So now you have to click it again. Again, it seems redundant, but this redundancy was put in for a purpose. It was to save you from doing things inadvertently. I mean, we all get distracted. We all kind of lose track of where we are. And um, uh, this way you've got three clicks to do what you really could do in one, but it's saving you from making a mistake. All right, now that email is being sent, okay? It's a very large list. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get that out. And um, that's it though. Now, every single person that clicks on that action link will be taken to YouTube. They'll be able to watch my video. And after that, they will also, well, I shouldn't say after that. They will be taken to YouTube at the same time they will be identified and tagged inside of our CRM. So really that action link is doing two functions. It's tagging them and identifying them in our CRM. So I can come back to it and say, okay, this is our subgroup that is interested in billing. It will take them to YouTube, okay? And if I wanted to, I could have also put them into a sales path. I could have removed them from a sales path. I could have removed the tag. So all this automation takes place from one clink, clink one click of one link okay not a clink that'd be a kernel in an old tv show if you're old enough you know what i'm talking about if you're not old enough you're like what the heck is he going on about but anyhow kernel not kernel clink one click of one link and that's it now i'm using my crm to automate my system i'm using my crm to reduce a very massive list down to a very small list a very specific list especially important in a freemium type model look you only have so much time in the day you can only focus on so many sales calls you can only send so many direct mailers before your budget is gone okay you've got to be smart with how you spend your money how you target your customers. You cannot do the shotgun approach forever. It's okay using a, a free tool like email, which is again, free to send emails to subset your list, to segment your list. And then you've got to take that segmentation, drive it down even smaller. So free email, send it to everyone. Direct mail, send it to fewer people. Phone calls, send it to fewer people. The higher the cost of that sales technique, whether it's you know making a direct call, making an appointment, doing a demo, the higher that cost is, the fewer people you can afford to do it to. So you have to keep segmenting down so that you're applying your highest cost to your highest value. I mean, that's just basic sales 101. Unfortunately, most people don't do that. Right? They're out scrambling around, firing all these things out, mailing stuff off, and then wondering why their ROI on their sales is terrible. Okay, You gotta have a tool like this CRM, which does the work for you. If you are using a CRM or you're spending all your time dumping data in so that someone else can look at a dashboard, well, you're not uh, in an effective organization. Okay, It's just that simple. You're wasting time. A CRM should save time for you. If it's taking more time to use it, if it becomes a burden to your schedule, you are using the wrong CRM or you are using the CRM in the wrong way. That's the only two options you have at that point. A CRM should always save you time. It should save you effort. It should save you money. <sighs> okay. 
I'm almost out of coffee, so I gotta top, stop. Yeah, see, it's only my second cup. I need to be third. I won't be saying clink and top. I need to stop talking, finish my coffee, get to work on other things like calling customers that have already been segmented, that have proven to be people that wanna to talk to me. All right, you have a great day. I hope I helped you. I hope that uh, this has been an educational type of video for you. And if you want to have a CRM like this one, well, it's in the CloudNet 360 system. It is part of the Soccer Pro system. If you are a club and you need to do marketing and sales and get more customers, this is the tool for you. All right, you have a great day. My name is Gary. Call me if you need anything. Our numbers are on the websites. We are always here to talk to you. We are always here to help you. We are always here to do demos, screen share, zooms, you name it. If you don't have Soccer Pro today and you love soccer, go get it, it's free. If you have a small business and you are not selling as much as you think you could be, go get a copy of or a account with CloudNet 360. You can do what I just did. It will automate your business. It will change your life. All right. Have a great day. This is Gary checking out. Bye now.